So a bunch of new feats have been added to D&D in the new player's handbook. Well, there's actually only four new feats, but a bunch of old feats have been changed so much, they're basically new. The first new feat is Musician. It's an origin feat, so you can grab this as your free feat at level one, and it gives you proficiency with three musical instruments. Also, when you finish a short or a long rest, you can bust out a quick wonder wall and give inspiration to a couple of allies. Heroic inspiration is pretty good, letting you reroll any die, but only being able to give this to a few people per short rest is quite low impact. This is a C tier feat. It's flavorful, it's simple, take it if it works for your backstory, but you're not going to be winning any awards for power here. The next new feat is Crafter, another origin feat. It gives you a 20% discount on all non-magic items you buy. This sounds good, except how often do you buy non-magical items after like level 5? Maybe this could save you money on some expensive poisons? But it's good for shields and plate armor, right? Well, actually, no. Because if you're taking this feat, it's probably for the three tools proficiencies so you can use the new crafting rules. If you're crafting items personally, they're half price, so 20% off full price doesn't matter. Unless you can use this to get a 20% discount on the raw materials you need for crafting, in which case this represents a 60% discount with the crafting rules on crafting an item. So you can make splint armor for only 80 gold over 8 days, and 17 AC ain't bad. Finally, there's fast crafting, letting you vomit out one of the items on this list at the end of a long rest for free. You have to use that item before your next long rest, at which point it falls apart. But it's do it yourself. What are you gonna do? Most of these are useless, but caltrops are actually pretty good, especially in the early game. They demand a DC 15 dexterity save or reduce a creature's speed to zero when it moves over them. If you're a thief rogue with the fast hands ability to deploy these as a bonus action, or you're a wizard who can order their familiar to scatter them every single turn, it's pretty good. Otherwise, it's very niche. I'd say this is a B-tier feat. It's flavorful, and maybe you can use it to snag a better piece of armor than you normally would in the very early game. The next new feat is Speedy, and it seems suspiciously familiar. Increase dex or con by one, increase your movement speed by 10 feet, ignore difficult terrain when you dash, and opportunity attacks have disadvantage against you. This is just the mobile feat. It's almost identical, except mobile gives you immunity to opportunity attacks from creatures you hit, and this gives all creatures disadvantage on opportunity attacks against you. A free disengage against one creature is better than every creature just having disadvantage on opportunity attacks against you. However, speedy gives you an ability score increase, so it is probably better than mobile. Mobile was already a good feat, so this can chill in A tier. The final new feat is martial weapons training which is essentially a renamed Weapon Master, which used to be among the worst feats in the game. This is still pretty bad, giving you proficiency with martial weapons and a plus one in strength or dex. This isn't even an origin feat, so if you cooked up some wild builds that needed weapon proficiency but didn't get them from its class features, you still have to wait to level four to even do this. There's also a bunch of species options that give you weapon proficiencies for free. This is D tier, but if martial weapon training replaced weapon master, what does weapon master do now? Well, it gives you plus one in strength or dex, and it lets you use the weapon mastery property of one weapon you are proficient with. Most classes that would want to access weapon mastery get it anyway, but I could see this as a nice pick on monks who want to use daggers. Daggers have the nick property, letting you make an extra attack with them as part of your attack action. That means a level 10 monk can attack six times a turn, three times with daggers, and three times with Flurry of Blows. And because daggers are monk weapons, they're using your martial arts die, so that's kind of crazy damage, actually. So this does have some niche uses. It can go in BT. Hello, I'm God, and this is the past. There's nothing here because I haven't made the universe yet. I've also taken a form that your human brain can understand, the torso of a human on the body of Optimus Prime. Creating the universe is going to be a lot of work, uh, like at least at least six days work, and there's gonna be a lot to keep track of. Luckily, when it comes to world building, I can just use World Anvil. World Anvil is the ultimate world building platform, the perfect tool for creating and managing your campaign no matter the detail. 
With the Chronicles feature, you can connect timelines and maps together, giving a visual representation of events in your world. You can even have an alternate timeline for NPCs, keeping track of events beyond the party and keeping them secret until the big reveal. Use code d, &D Shorts at checkout for a 51% discount. That's d, d Shorts at checkout to grab World Anvil, link below. Keen Mind used to suck, right? Well, the new one is better, giving you a plus one to intelligence and giving you proficiency in one of these skills. But if you already have proficiency with one of those skills, you get expertise instead. You can also take the study action as a bonus action now, but the study action isn't very good in combat, so honestly, it's pretty meh. It's better than before, but Keen Mind is still outclassed by the skill expert feat, which is in the same book. Unless someone can find a way to break taking the study action as a bonus action each turn, Keen Mind is still bad. It goes in D tier. The new Mage Slayer feat though? That one is pretty crazy. Increase your dex or strength by one, and anytime you hit a creature concentrating on something, they have disadvantage on the save to maintain concentration. This is great against enemy spellcasters, but those are kind of rare. However, you also get Guarded Mind. If you fail an Intelligence, Wisdom, or charisma saving throw, you can just choose to succeed, and you can use this once per short rest. It's basically legendary resistance. Hell yeah! This can chill in low A tier. A decent defensive feat with the side benefit of absolutely destroying enemy spellcasters. So the new Skulker feat still has the feature that when you miss a creature with an attack roll while you are hidden, it doesn't reveal your position. That is still good. But it also now gives you a plus one to dexterity, advantage on any stealth check you make to hide in combat and blind sight out to 10 feet. Blind sight is amazing, letting you ignore heavy obscurement from effects like fog cloud or darkness. So you can make every melee attack at advantage, all incoming attacks have disadvantage, and you can move without triggering opportunity attacks. Skulker is one of the most glowed up feats in this book, a solid A tier option. Observant used to be an incredible feat, giving you a plus five to to your passive perception and investigation skills. It was easy to get your passive scores over 20, even in the early game, giving you what is essentially omniscience out to 60 feet. Now, however, it's essentially a counterpart to the new Keen Mind, giving you a plus one in intelligence or wisdom and proficiency in one of these skills. If you already have proficiency in that skill, it's expertise instead, and you can take the search action as a bonus action. Search is a better combat action than Keen Mind's study, because because it can let you look for hidden enemies or battlefield traps. But dude, this is still worse than skill experts in like 99% of cases, and it's a huge downgrade on the original. This can go in D tier. And speaking of D tier feats, Grappler is the worst feat in the game. Or is it? The new grappler gives you a plus one to strength or dex and gives you advantage on all attack rolls against a creature you are grappling. More importantly, when you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can attempt to grapple it and deal damage at the same time. So essentially, you can try and grapple for free, but only once per turn. Finally, your movement speed isn't halved when you move a creature you are grappling as long as it isn't bigger than you. This is going to go crazy with spike growth support. This has the potential to be the highest damaging feat in the game. Granted, this is a bit cheesy, or cheese gratery, if you will, but even so, this is a good feat on pretty much any unarmed fighter. It can go in A tier. So durable used to suck. I've run thousands of D&D games across the world, and I've never seen anyone use this. The new version increases your constitution by one, gives you advantage on death saving throws, and lets you burn a hit die, roll it, and regain hit points equal to the result as a bonus action. Essentially, that healing that people can normally only do over a short rest, you can throw that out as a bonus action. This is solid, translating to a decent amount of healing by the mid to late game if you are a build that can spare their bonus action. It's B tier. Sharpshooter and Great Weapon Master land together as two of the greatest feats in Core 5e that we all suspected would get a nerf. The new Great Weapon Master increases your strength by one and keeps the ability to attack again as a bonus action if you score a critical hit or reduce a creature to zero hit points. But instead of the iconic minus five to hit plus 10 damage, now you simply add your proficiency bonus to all damage rolls made 
grenade with a heavy weapon when you take the attack action. That means no extra damage on your bonus action attack and no extra damage on opportunity attacks. Still, a fighter at level 20 should be dropping an extra 24 damage a turn with this without even needing to action surge, which is pretty good. It's definitely worse than the old version, but it isn't bad. Bonus action attacks are always nice. I can definitely see this being a feat you take towards the end of your build once you've got all your stats sorted out. It can go in A tier. Sharpshooter increases your dex by one, lets you ignore half and three quarters cover on your ranged attack rolls, and steals the iconic crossbow expert feature that lets you ignore disadvantage from being within five feet of an enemy when attacking with a ranged weapon. By the way, crossbow expert still has that feature, but only for crossbows now. Finally, attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged weapon attacks. It's fine. It's definitely a lot worse than the original sharpshooter and the new great weapon master. A longbow ranged fighter used to be the most powerful way to play a fighter, and it definitely isn't anymore. This goes in low B tier, just because that 600 foot snipe with a longbow through three quarters cover is really cool. A bunch of other feats saw small tweaks, but there you have all the new, or basically new, feat options in the book. You might have noticed there are no S tier feats here. There are some S tier feats in the book, but we'll have to cover the very best and very worst at another time. But if you're hungry for more new feats, you can support this channel on Patreon for a bunch of awesome rewards. I publish new feats, spells, species, maps, and ready to play adventures there every single month. Support on Patreon makes all of this possible in the terrifying world of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. And I also run games for patrons as well. Also remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel. And yeah, that's all I got. I'll see you next time.